etudes and second plan improvisations are silent and verbal improvisations. Only now we're exploring the life of the character. One of the most important things to learn as an actor is how to improvise as yourself in your own situations. In other words, in verbal and silent improvs, bring your own life to the stage as well as imaginary life, but avoid playing and trying to build a character in those improvisations. You're learning how to build a character through those little building blocks, but you can't create a human being instantly like that. So what do we do? We then take and build the character by first studying the play and then choosing to create a sketch in silence, which we will call an etude, a study. This sketch will follow the same structure of dramatic action that we've mentioned in verbal structure of verbal action on stage and silent action. The same structure. Only now, the etude must have an artistic point. And here we begin to create the dual perspectives. I, the creator of the character, and I, the character in the character's circumstances. So, we build an etude, first of all, I always recommend, choose something simple, something you do every day. A typical day in the life of Hamlet. A typical day in the life of Andre, whoever the character might be. And you ask, what is my character's super task in the play? That guides everything. It's also called the super objective. Super task means my main action, my ruling action throughout the entire play and its goal, its objective. It's super task, super objective. Well, you're searching for it. Remember, you can't find it like that. You don't even want to find it like that. You might have it like that, but that isn't what's important. What's important is the search for the super objective because that exploration will lead you to making discoveries along the route that will prove either that your guesstimate in the beginning was right or wrong. And you'll discover so many more things about the character that you can use. So many nuances, so many colors, so many different forms of behavior. So we will do a series of improvisations. Now, second plan refers to everything that happens before the time of the play, after the time of the play, and during the play when you are not on stage. Yes, when you exit, you're going someplace. You want to give that thought. We will do improvisations on the event which, without which, the play would not exist because that event is bringing about the current event we see in the curtain goes up or when the lights come on or when the camera starts rolling. Then we will ask, where are we going to? Why are we leaving the room? And we'll practice our entrances and exits to bring that offstage life onto the stage. So the audience has a sense that there's this continuous life going on offstage, as well as what happens to the characters after the movie, after the play. Because knowing that, discussing it, telling this whole story is our purpose. We're telling a story. We're revealing a novel, either scenically on the stage or through film by telling a story through a sequence of images. So all that will be worked out improvisationally. And we will also improvise the actual scenes in the play, the actual actions in the text. And this is how we find actions in the text. It's the beginning of active analysis. By improvising, we will find the character and the truth of the character on our feet. Active analysis through physical action. In this segment, what I want you to do is to prepare a character study. And that's where the word etude comes in. It's a sketch, a thumbnail sketch, a small sketch of one aspect of the character's life. It's a study. And you want to always give it a point. You're searching for something, such as the character's super task in the play, also called the super objective. So when we do these etudes, the main reason we're doing them is to find the character's traits, personality traits, the physical characteristics of the character, and the psychological makeup of the character in conjunction with the relationships the imaginary environment and the world the character lives in. And all of this is done to find the super task of the character and the super task of the play. So in this case, I want the three sisters to do what happens in the morning before the play begins, just a few moments before the curtain goes up.
Hi, Irina. Hi. Oh, you're late. I asked you to be here 15 minutes earlier. Mm -hmm. Did you bring the things I asked you to, Marsha? Of course I did. Why don't you put your stuff down and, and look? Oh, it's beautiful. Baked it myself. Why wouldn't I for mine? For Arena. How sweet. Do you want to set them up or? Mm, sure. How do, how do I look? How's my hair? You look beautiful. You look so beautiful. Do you want me to put it up for you? No, I think I'd like to wear it down today. I don't know, when I woke up, I just felt so excited. I just, I don't know, remembering that it's my saint's day and to have everyone here. Well, we're all going to be here for you, so. Do you know Father died exactly a year ago today? On this very day. Okay, we can stop here. Okay. So you decided just to do these few moments. This is, of course, the opening line of the play. So we would stop there because we're not going to work on that right now. Let me ask you a couple questions. What is the atmosphere of the Prozorov household? You can sit down if you like. What's the atmosphere of the Prozorov household? today, and just generally? A happy one. Open. A happy, open. People come and go a People lot. People come and go a lot. Um, you know, the brother is always around, you know, we sort of love to tease him, and different gentlemen make their hellos, say make their hellos, say their hellos. Um, but also, I mean, but there's also a tired, weighted feeling, feeling from this past year, um, and the fact that you know, since the father has died and she works all the time, um, and she's depressed. But there's also a weighted feeling too. Is there any sense of rebirth, or at least tr <clears throat> trying to overcome the past? And this is a new day, and that was yesterday, and today is going to be absolutely. And that's today is the that's, that, yeah. today. They really observe the one year of mourning. We have to remember that in this time period, if you didn't, people would talk about it. So what we're looking for in this improvisation is your relationships. Now, I thought what was good was that you established the environment as being pleasant and lovely with flowers and sunlight. Let me ask you a couple questions. Did you feel uncomfortable and uncertain and not quite know how to behave? Yes. I did, for sure. But you didn't. Mm -hmm. Let's ask why you didn't. Um, well, I... <laughs> I just... I think I knew where I was coming from and what I was doing. Um, I was waking up, I just got dressed. Um, you know, I was excited to see my sister arrive. <laughs> but then it was weird. But, so then I went back into my own little um, world of just getting ready because it's my day and I don't feel like dwelling on my father's death today. Um, so I, was just, I guess, I don't know, I was clear about that and just in, I, in happy mode and I did not want anyone else to tell me otherwise. I'm going to be happy today. Excellent. And you? You didn't feel comfortable? Not at the very beginning, no. Uh... I think, actually, not until I, I went into the beginning of the play, I didn't feel comfortable. Because <laughs> the beginning of the play, at least you know, well, there's a signpost there. Yeah, but there was a moment, I, I mean, I can't yeah. recall what it was, in which I was responding to um, Irina. And it was like, you know, father died exactly a year ago today, as if it, God, I had forgotten about it. I was so involved that's in everything That's else. good. That's, that's what you found your first moment. I, well, yeah. In terms of what can work right now. Uh -huh. through the improv. So that's valuable. That's what you have to remember. In fact, that's how everything needs to be. You're excited also, aren't you? What's your, let me ask though, 
What is, well, I'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to ask you your mood. But before I do, let me ask you, what was uncomfortable for you? Well, for one thing, I guess I was just, there was a, I forgot that I was coming from my house. In my mind, I was just in the kitchen bringing stuff into this room for the party. And they said, they look, you know, so that's why, they're like, hi, hi. I'm like, you know, kind of. So that was just a little awkward for me because at that moment, I realized that, you know, I had something else in my mind. I was already there. Good. And so that was a little awkward for me because. That's, that's good because one of the things we have to do is everybody in the play and the ensemble has to be in agreement, right? right. And that's why we do these improvisations right. so that we can find out what everybody's idea is. So we don't have, if we just talk about it all, it means nothing. Right. If we get up on our feet, at least we discover something. Mm -hmm. And so it's active analysis. Okay, I think you needed to project more of your relationship. That's what I was looking for. Like, let me ask you, what is your relationship to Olga? Um, Seemed like she was an old nag and you were tired. Yeah, of she's my older sister, and That's what by the way, she actually I responded more to the way she asked me that question. You know that it was just bought. That's the way she always, you know, treats me—the nagging older sister kind of, the responsible one that's always. Okay. Now the there's something in that. Your response was right. There was something in that caridad which was correct, and something in it that needs an adjustment. I don't want to say wrong because everything we try is right. It's just we need adjustments. You know, but basically it was wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you you love your sister, yeah, and the way really how are these women raised? Like, what is the difference between well, the way you would be raised today in their class and how you would be raised then in that class, in the aristocracy, intelligentsia? Well, I think that we were probably raised with a lot of education, a lot of roles, a lot of structure, a lot of uh, etiquette as to how you behave in all different kinds of situations. That's right. And also gentleness. Right. Gentleness. Yeah. Yeah. Be because what these are like porcelain ladies. If if they if they're too strong, if they're too independent, they're not gonna succumb to the environment of the play, which does their spirits are strong, but their social conditions don't give them any options. And, and that's what we need to see because that's what needs to change. The restrictive society around them needs to change. They just need to break free like an egg in the shell. So we have to see these women with really strong energy, inner energy. Contempor mm -hmm. so as a con how do you make a play contemporary? You, the actress, must be contemporary, but your behavior must be in the time period. So you'll feel like a bird trapped in a cage. Mm. Because that's how it becomes contemporary, because contemporary women will identify with that no matter how you speak, no matter how you dress, no matter how you move. They will feel your subtext in your body and in your words. They'll understand the, the, the frustration of this restrictive life. Well, l let's stop here, give you some time to think about that, and you can look over your scene and see where some of these suggestions and what you found might help in our analysis of the scene and the text itself when we get to that, okay? okay. Thank you very much. This is the beginning of the second act, or at what point in the play is this? This is the beginning of the second act, an etude to prepare, to prepare for the beginning of the second act. An etude to prepare for the beginning of the second act. And what are you targeting to explore in this etude? Um, my behavior and my reactions, what is something typical that I would enjoy doing and what would happen if that thing got disturbed, if I got thrown off my path. How do I react as a person if I don't get what I want? Okay, yeah. let's see what happens.
Andre. May I ask you a question? Yes. Why did you close the door on your wife? Um, because I don't want to speak to her right now. I'm avoiding her and I don't want to talk to her right now. This is the first chance that I've gotten all day to do what I want to do. And I don't want to be disturbed. What is it you want to do? Um, translate. Translate? Translate literature. Literature? Yes. From what language to what language? From, in this case, French to English. So you, in addition to your native Russian, you speak, read and write French and English? Yes. Any other languages? No, I think Irena uh, speaks Italian, but I think everyone else only speaks through, uh, three, three or four languages in the family. I'd like to suggest that you consider German. Okay. Because although, also in addition, and some Italian because you are most likely a classic scholar and have been thoroughly trained in Greek, classical Greek and Latin. That's how you would have started. But for you it was only probably, in, you, this is the research you need to do, I'm just saying, showing you a direction. You need to find out what a man of his intellect and education and class would have studied to get to a point where he would know how to translate French into English and he's never been to, or maybe he's been to France, but he's probably never been to America or to England. Do you understand? Yes. So this is quite an accomplishment by any means. Think of what you would have to go through to know that many languages. Years and years of study, certainly. Absolutely, from the time you're a child. Now, what is your relationship with your wife, Natasha? Um, I feel like I am in a backwater town and she is available and sexy, but I, she's all there is for me to, to choose from. I, I like her, I, I love her, but she's all there is here. Was it the glands that took over? Yes. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It was the glands that took over. Yes. So, so really, she wasn't your match? No. Socially or culturally no. or in education? No. What problems has that created for you and your sisters? Um, Natasha is not schooled in the same way that we were schooled in social graces and therefore oversteps boundaries that we take for granted rules by which we live and that that creates problems for me and, and me in relation to my sisters. You have some experience in that. I do. I can tell because you notice how quickly he answered it and he, so you have some analogous experience. Right. I mean it, what I thought of when you said that was I'm from the south and essentially there are a set of rules by which we live and um, Gentility in your particular class. Right. And if you bring someone who's not familiar with those rules into the circle, it creates problems. So that's very good that you have that. Because I, that gentility means a lot in terms of why Andre does not fight back. And that's what you need to think about. Why don't I fight back? Because you would. You might, as a gentleman of the South, you might do it in a very subtle and patient way, but you would do it. But Andre doesn't, and instead he goes crazy okay. with, with remorse and grief. My next action was going to be leaving through the window. 
Is that an appropriate action for sure, Andre? Sure, sure. Just to avoid the conflict at all costs? Sure. Okay. But I thought that already came through enough, and that's why I wanted to ask you some questions to give you a direction to work in for the next attitude and for the right. scene. Right. So think about that. When you come to the scene, why, doesn't, why does he give up so soon? His, why do you give up your dreams? Why do any of us give up our dreams? Chekhov is often talking about the triviality of life and the vulgarity of the environment. Can anyone relate to this? The triviality of daily life, mm -hmm. having to go to work, having to drive here, having to pick up this, having to do that, and not having a chance to really do your art or translate your book or do the things you really want. And he's saying, fight that. Well, let's figure out what he's saying. We'll find that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.